So if you had to start testing tomorrow, would you be ready? Could you be ready? If you had to deliver a presentation or a workshop tomorrow, could you do it? Do you know the tactics to get ready? In this video, I'm going to explain the tactics that I use um, to prepare test strategies such that I could enact them now, tomorrow, in five minutes, whatever, and to get ready for presentations and workshops. These are the exact tactics that I use. So very often when we're planning out our, our testing, we're thinking of a test strategy or a test plan. And one of the things that we, we do in our heads is we think about this as a document. What we're actually trying to do is think through such that we understand it, to help us understand what our strategy is and what our plan is. A side effect should be that we can then communicate that to other people. And a side effect of that should be that we might want to have that in a form where we can give that to people they can understand it and digest it on their own and then ask us questions. But very often what we end up doing is we start with, here is my test strategy, here's my plan, here's the document, we give that to people, rather than supporting us in our thought process. Because if we want to do things tomorrow or in five minutes, the person that counts is us and our understanding and that's what we build up from. So to do that, um, we have to create whatever document we're gonna do in ways that it can be released easily. So essentially, I will start to think through the testing strategy or process that I've got as an outline and uh, flesh out the, the information as we go to try and work out what is really important. What are the risks? So I learned how to do this when I was working on formal test projects with documentation templates. Now I realise that documentation templates force us to work from the start of the document template to the end of the template and just fill in the blanks. And the blanks are just irrelevant information and the document isn't complete until the information is in there. And very often the information doesn't help us because it's irrelevant to what we're doing and we end up using the boilerplate that's in there. Document templates just don't help this process so I end up throwing them away. Then I'm faced with a blank sheet of paper and it's got test strategy or test plan at the top. And I'm trying to think, how can I communicate this to people? So what I'm doing is I'm thinking, if I had to start testing tomorrow, uh, what would I do? What do I need to know in order to support me? Because those what do I need to know things are the prerequisites. They're the dependencies I have on other people. I need to know what the requirements are. We don't have the requirements. So if I don't even get the requirements, what would I do? What are the risks of that? And I'm just trying to think through if I had to do this as fast as possible. Now I use this when I'm uh, creating presentations, when I'm uh, creating uh, documents to give to people. If it's a document, I'll start with an outline and in theory I could give them that outline and that outline supports my thought process and if I had to, I could communicate what is gonna be in that document using the outline. I've got an outline for this um, video that I'm working through now. I haven't fleshed it out, but I've got an outline. It allows me to communicate verbally. It's not necessarily in the format that I would give to you to read to understand what I'm talking about. I use this when I'm programming, right? Because what we do is we, we write tests, which document what we're gonna do next. We can put at ignore on those tests so that the tests don't stop at compiling because we want the code to compile as much as possible, as often as possible. We do a branch by abstraction. So we're not breaking the existing code, we're carving off code in a different section that we can enable when we're ready. It's all ways of contributing to the main code base, having the information in there that's communicating to us, that's getting it ready to go out but isn't impacting anyone else. And we want it to always be compilable, always be um, functional. So we start with the basic functionality, then add in the error handling, then add on a GUI, things like that, and build up the test. So we've got the essence in there, even if we don't have all the details to support it. When I'm working on presentations for a talk, what I'll do is I'll start with a blurb because the conference provider needs to know what I'm gonna talk about. So I think that through in the blurb, that gives me thought process of, is this what I really want to talk about? What are the main points that I'm going to cover? That's my thought process. I can look at that. I can deliver that to them. That's not the presentation, but that's a good enough deliverable for them to think through it. What's this going to be like? Then I'll convert that into a, a marker set of slides. But I do this in Markdown. 
Right? I, I use tools to support this process. I don't work in Word documents. I don't work in uh, presentation slides. I write in Markdown, which is essentially a text outline format. The reason I do that is that I have something that I'm working with where I can ignore all the formatting. Then I'll put it through another tool like uh, Pandoc or MARP and it will add the formatting for me. So I'm taking an entire step away from the, the creation process and putting more of the emphasis on the thinking process and the communication process to myself. Sometimes after I've created a set of marker slides, I'll create a mind map. But the mind map is there to support me in terms of creating a high level overview that I can see all in one place and that I can track as I'm going through. I don't tend to give that mind map to other people. I don't think mind maps are very good deliverable to people because they don't communicate very much, but they're a very good document to give you an overview and to support your communication with other people. But people do like mind maps, so sometimes we'll give them out as bonus um, handouts or information to people. They like them. Um, I don't think they communicate very accurately there's a lot of ambiguity and people read into it. But if you're comfortable with that and it's a document that's designed to get people thinking, then a mind map might be a good uh, document to deliver to people. When I'm working on workshops, if I had to do the workshop tomorrow, what would I really need? Well, I need all the experience that I've built up. And really, I probably just need a set of exercises to give people. So I know what exercise is coming next. I can then talk through the theory that people need in order to do that exercise. So I start when I'm building a workshop with a set of exercises. When it's a coding type workshop, that then helps me go and build all the example code that we're gonna need. But then I work back from the exercises to flesh out what are the theory points we need. And then do I have exercises that cover all the theory points? Um, is the theory in a, enough an order? And then that allows me to reorder the exercises. But essentially I start with the exercises. And the aim here is really to incrementally refine the work that we're doing, to give us the information we need to, and the understanding to start if we had to, and then to give us something that will support our ability to communicate to people using that information, and then we refine it to the point where we can then give it to people and they can read and understand it on their own. So keep that strategy in mind. If you had to do this in five minutes, what would you do? You'd build an outline, then you'd rely on your experience and go and deliver it. If you had to do this tomorrow, what would you do? If you had to do this in a week's time, that's what you keep in your head because that allows you to focus on what's really important and to focus on just enough information to allow you to communicate to people and then you can refine it into a final handout deliverable that you're gonna to give to people. It's a good strategy. I use it all the time, pretty much every deliverable or product that I'm working on, I use this. Try it out for yourself. And remember, if this kind of video is useful to you, remember to subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much.